Hey guys, welcome back. It's me again with Phoenix Salon Education. Today, and you can see our beautiful model has long blonde hair. What we are going to do today is we're going to do a long haircut with some long layers. We're gonna do the whole haircut dry and straight. As you can see, her hair is really long, really damaged at the ends, and it's just not doing anything. She really doesn't have any layering going on here. She has complained that it just doesn't feel healthy. It doesn't style correctly. It's just not doing what she wants it to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start off. We're going to take a lot of this length off just with our, our clippers. I do this just because it's easy. I know that I'll go back and refine it. But right now I just kind of want to get that length off so that I'm not working with an unnecessary amount of length. And now that I've got that length taken off, I make sure that there's nothing long sticking out. Make sure that everything looks like a regular haircut. Make sure nothing's out of the ordinary. I know that later on when I'm finished with this haircut, then I will go back and refine the length. I'm going to start this haircut with the layers first and do the length last. I do this because I like to work from inside out. I like to have a nice shape inside so that when I go back and I refine the length, it's a nice strong length. To start these layers, I'm going to section the back from the front. As you can see, I section just behind the ear. The good rule of thumb is I like to make sure that there's no more hair falling over hair in my first section. And I'm going to separate right down the middle. So basically what I do is I separate from the top of the crown to behind the ear and from the top of the crown to the nape of the neck. Okay, I'm going to start the layering. So what we're doing, starting in the middle, is I'm going to pull the hair straight out of the head. And I'm going to open and close my shears, and I'll work my way down. So as you can see, I'm not closing my shears all the way. I'm opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. And because I am working down the hair shaft, these are nice, long, concave layers. Moving more weight and length up top, and preserving the length at the bottom. Let me show you what this looks like as I pull it out. As you can see, the shortest layer lives on top, longer and longer and longer as we get to the bottom. And doing it this way, it allows the bottom or the base to fall out. Again, you know, we're moving more length and weight on top to give as much movement as possible through the top without removing or compromising any of the integrity at the base. I want you to notice that I'm pulling everything back to the middle. I am creating a nice triangular shape in this haircut, pushing the weight forward, so in theory the shortest layer lives right in the back middle, and it slowly gets longer as I get behind the ear. The reason I've chosen to do this is because she was a little bit sparser behind her ear, and I wanted to build the weight there, while still giving her enough movement and airiness in the haircut for her to notice the difference. Because we're doing a dry cut, I can see exactly what the hair is doing. I can see exactly where it's falling, and I always am a visual, visual person. So I like to move the hair around, see if anything is sticking out, anything's not sitting correctly, and I will always go back and recut the section. Because this is a very visual haircut, I know that if I went back and I cross-checked this, it would not be technically perfect. I would still see the shape. I would see a little bit of that integrity there but it would not be technically perfect. Because this is a dry haircut, I know that I'm achieving softness. I'm looking for movement. I'm not looking for perfection in my layers. As you can see here, the one side's been cut and the other side has not been cut. You can see the difference in the movement, in the layers, in the softness on the side that's already been cut. 
while the side that has not been cut, that has just blow-dried the same way, only falls there. And I'm going to do the exact same to the other side. Now that I've finished both sides, I always make sure to double check in the mirror, make sure it looks balanced, make sure it looks the same, make sure it looks like a one had a hair in it too. Also, I go back and I individually slide cut anything that may be sticking out, anything that I'm not loving. Because this is a very visual haircut, I know that I am allowed to have a little bit more freedom and craft and sculpt this hair the way that I want it to find. Again, opening and closing my shears, I'm not snip snipping, I'm just lighting my shear on top of the hair strand instead of cutting all the way through. I have now removed the length that I wanted to. Now to finish the back, I'm going to take two large triangular sections of the back of the hair. I'm over directing it to the opposite side and I'm just back cutting up the hair strand. This is a really loose technique. I'm only doing this to remove just a little bit of the weight that I've built up. Again, I want the length there to imitate the weight, but I don't want the actual weight there. As you'll see, this is a very large section, pulling it all the way across, opposite side, and what this does is it over directs it, so the length is still longest towards the back of the ear, but the weight is not all there. Because I know that this is a very visual haircut, I know that this is all done dry, I go back and just check for balance, make sure it all sits nicely. And then I will move on to the front. And in the front, we want to make sure that the back blends into the front, it connects, it makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take horizontal sections on her hair, take some of the hair from the back, see where it's falling, and same technique, opening and closing my shears, working that nice concave shape, short to long, opening and closing, not adding any hard harsh lines and this is long, beautiful blonde hair. Again, we know that we want the hair to be soft, we want it to have lots of movement, but we don't want it to be too short or too sparse. And now that I've finished with one side, I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Again, these horizontal sections, short to long, really soft, opening and closing my shears, never closing them fully, always making sure that we're keeping this hair really soft. And now I'm going to move on to the face frame. I'm going to pull the hair all the way across the other side. As you see here, the hair is short to very long, and I'm letting a lot of that length drop out because I know that I want to keep that really soft and I don't want the layers to live all the way in the length. Again, preserving as much of the fullness at the bottom while adding as much of the softness to the top. You'll be able to really see that as I drag that all the way across her face, that bottom falls out and I'm only really cutting that top layer. Now my clients, if they start complaining or they start itching or they start moving, I always make sure to redirect them, make sure that their head is exactly where I need it to be. I'd much rather them be uncomfortable for a couple of minutes and make that haircut last a lot longer instead of them being comfortable now and I have to see them again a lot sooner because the haircut grew out in a way that we did not want.
and you'll be able to see that these are not the 90s face framing figures. They sit really soft, they really frame the face, and I'm going to move on to the other side. Again, same thing, only this time I'm pushing her head slightly away from me to create that same movement in the hair and to make sure that the shape is the exact same on one side or the other. And the last thing that I do to this front piece to make sure that it's all blended, that it all makes sense, is I'm going to take a giant triangular section. Think about a far back bang. I'll show you right here. This section is really triangular, only really dealing with everything above the round of the head. I'm just going to pull this up, and I'm going to start back cutting. Realizing that this is only removing a little bit of that weight, while still preserving that length through the foot. And all this does is it softens up those layers that I've put in there, making sure that everything's soft, everything flows really nicely, and that back and that front are cohesive. It's not one haircut in the front, one haircut in the back. I just wanted to say thanks again for watching the video. Hope it helped you guys out. Hope you learned something new. Maybe reiterated something old. Uh, just wanted to say that I'll be doing more of these videos. I know this one wasn't great, but we will get better. Practice makes perfect. Uh, check back next week for another new video. Who knows what it's going to be. Maybe it'll be hair cutting. Maybe it'll be color. Maybe it'll be blow drying. Who knows? Uh, go ahead and check out our website. I'll link that in the information below. Also, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, any ways that I can get better, you know, I'm an educator, I'm always learning, I'm always growing, leave everything in the comments below. Okay guys, see you next week.